Hey guys! In this video, my sister and I will be drawing Dream SMP members as Dungeons & Dragons characters, specifically the Dream Team, Bad Boy Halo, and Carl. This video was inspired by ABD Illustrates Disney & Dragons, which got both of us into D&D in the first place. If this video and my sister's Instagram post, at SoapCloud underscore, both hit 50 likes, then we'll do a part 2 with the Sleepy Boys. I know, kind of ambitious light goal considering I'm only at 17 subs currently, which is why you should subscribe! <laughs> hey! Seriously though, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And with that, let's get straight into it. So first up, we have Dream, and we decided to make him a half-elf rogue. We thought being a half-elf would fit him because they are very versatile with their skills and abilities. Half-elves also have a long lifespan and with the amount of times Dream somehow manages to escape in Manhunt, we expect he'll live pretty long. As for being a rogue, well, Dream's sneaky in both the Manhunt series and the Dream SMP. Rogues are known to rely more on stealth and deception than brute force, which we thought fit Dream pretty well. Plus, rogues tend to have a high dexterity score, and with Dream's parkour skills, we couldn't pass this up. For his subclass, we picked Swashbuckler. This subclass focuses on speed and elegance of attacks and allows you to slip away unscathed from incoming hits. And Dream is pretty slippery. In a similar video by Evil Bard, she made Dream an arcane trickster since that subclass requires a high intelligence score. While Dream does make big IQ plays, he doesn't focus so much on magic, so we opted for something else. For his character design, I decided to keep the fingerless gloves for very obvious reasons. And of course, his signature smiley mask. I wanted to make the design lightweight for stealth, but also fashionable and slightly armored. So I made his turtleneck into some sort of leather armor and added arm guards. I also drew in some pockets on his pants for extra storage, added a diamond axe as his main weapon, and voila! The dream design was finished. Next, we have George. We wanted to base this character design off his role as the Mushroom King. And with that, we made him a gnome druid with his subclass being the Circle of Spores. Why a gnome, you ask? Well, cause he's sharp! Druids are nature's wise protectors, maintaining balance in all of its elements. And while George's main strength isn't wisdom, we thought it'd be cool nevertheless to see him as a druid. With this subclass being the circle of spores, I mean, come on, George controlling mushroom spores to attack? That'd be so amazing. His design is pretty simple. I gave him a mushroom hat and staff, since those were the most obvious elements to place mushrooms in. I made his clothes a bit more ruggedy to show that he's been out in the wild, and made the hues of his shirt and jacket just a tad bit more green so that he looked more like a druid. I added a backpack since every adventurer needs one, and gave him arm cuffs and a dagger. I think I hit my eureka moment when instead of drawing a leather belt, I drew a belt made of vines instead. That for me really added a much more druidy aspect to his design. For 
Sapnap's D&D design, I made him a fire genasi monk, inspired by the flame symbol on his Minecraft skin. Sapnap is also pretty good at PvP, so I decided to make him a monk, someone who is good at martial arts. This also allowed us to make his subclass the Way of the Four Elements, because more fire! Since monks are focused on martial arts, I wanted to make Sabnap's clothing more lightweight and easy to move in. So, following the stereotypical monk design, I added bandages to his hands and feet and baggy pants. Thinking about it now, I wonder how the bandages stay intact when he uses fire. He probably enchanted it, otherwise it'd burn. I also chose to make his eyes yellow and black and put magma cracks on his skin, not only to show that he's a fire genasi, but also because they look super cool. To add more elements from his original skin to his D&D design, I added the flame symbol on his pants and kept the black turtleneck and head bandana. The fire took really long to draw. It was my first time drawing fire like this and I wasn't satisfied with how it looked, so I kept on changing it. I think it could still be improved, but for now, I'm just happy to see that the fire is recognizable as fire. Bat's character was pretty straightforward. He serves the egg, a corrupt supernatural being, and his Minecraft skin is a demon. So making him a tiefling warlock was a no-brainer. Warlocks are people who have made dangerous pacts with powerful beings and in return gain many magical abilities. Tieflings, on the other hand, are a race with horns in the tail whose blood is infused with that of demons. It's honestly such a perfect fit. Bad's Warlock subclass is the Pact of the Great Old One. The beings classified under this pact are completely alien and foreign to the land, and are often ancient and immense in power. That description fit the egg so well, I had to pick it. Unlike choosing the race, class, and subclass for Bad, his character design took me forever. I didn't know how I wanted to incorporate his original design to this dark academia style, so I spent forever scrolling through Pinterest to try to find inspiration. One day during class though, I decided to just get into drawing instead of pondering over how I'd do it, and I came up with this design, which I'm pretty proud of. In his design, I gave him his signature hoodie, but added it to a vest-cloak combination instead. It was hard trying to lessen the sheer amount of black in the drawing, so I made the sleeves and pants varying shades of red to add a pop of color. I also gave him a robe at his side, made out of the egg's corrupt vines, as a way to visually show where his loyalties lie. And while Bad's Minecraft skin design doesn't have a tail like shown here, I added a thick tiefling tail to stay true to his race. It's not just the design that took me forever though. I took about 5 hours total on the drawing, for multiple reasons. One, the perspective of the pose I got online was very difficult for me. Two, hands need more be said. 
and 3. Perfecting the glow of the magic missile spell I drew above pad. As I'm speaking, I have just realized I drew his left hand wrong, but please just ignore that. <laughs> Lastly, we have Carl. He is a human bard from the College of Lore. Bards are known for their charm and their talent in music and storytelling. In the Dream SMP, Carl's main role is being a time traveler and preserving the tales he experiences. He's also known for being charismatic, so making him a bard was an obvious choice. As for his race, none of the fantasy races truly fit Carl, so we kept him human. The College of Lore was another obvious choice because, again, Carl's main role is preserving stories and adding more lore to the SMP. So, the College of Lore is a good fit. Costume design-wise, I wanted his outfit to be less formal but also bard-like. To give the bard vibes, I added a hat with feathers and a vest? I don't know what it's called, it's basically a suit without the sleeves. For even more bard vibes, I added loads of ruffles, like on the edge of the sleeves and on the collar area. And I added a messenger bag, maybe a bag of holding in disguise, for him to keep some books in. I gave him cropped pants to make his design more informal, and added the spiral pattern on the edges as a reference to the tales from the SMP. The hardest part about this design was deciding how to incorporate the colors because there are so many colors in Carl's Minecraft skin and I wanted to keep some clothing elements white or brown. So I just placed the colors in the same general area as his Minecraft skin so as to not clutter the drawing too much. I also played with patterns to creatively add more colors. And with that, we're done! This video was a month in the making, but we loved every bit of it, and it challenged us as artists to learn new skills. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. If you did, please like and subscribe, not only on my channel, but also on my amazing sister's Instagram. She posts more Dream SMP related content on there, as well as other miscellaneous drawings. You can check out my sister's Instagram, at SoCloud underscore. The link to her Insta, the links to the other amazing D&D content others have made, and the links to the music used is all in the description. Here's to hoping we hit the 50 likes for part 2 of the Sleepy Boys! Thanks for watching!